Hi, I'm Toby from AWS. Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm joined today by Barry from Electronium. Hi, Hi Barry. Hi, good to see you. Yeah, thanks. Welcome, Barry. Um, tell me, uh, what do Electronium do? So we're a cryptocurrency, um, and we're, we're more targeted to mobiles and to emerging worlds, so Africa's um, and you know, the Philippines, et cetera, as opposed to um, westernized countries. Um, to hit the unbanked people. Okay, so for someone in, in one of those countries uh, that doesn't have a bank, what kind of services can they get from, or what can they achieve by using Electronium? So they can buy goods, once we've got enough vendors set up, buy goods direct with our cryptocurrency as opposed to whatever their local currency is. Okay, great. So let's, uh, I guess we've got our solution here yep. up on the board. Uh, let's imagine we've got a user using the mobile app. Presumably they're going to hit the, the WAF first, are they? Yeah, so all traffic uh, goes through our WAF um, effectively, and that does a lot of blocking. Um, naturally, we get loads of people pretending to be other people, uh, denial of service attacks, et cetera. Mm. Um, and we block them at this root level first um, before moving traffic through to our EC2 instances. Okay, right. just to be clear, so WAF, we're talking about AWS WAF there? Yep. Yeah, yep. great, okay. Um, okay, so we've filtered out some of the traffic using WAF, and then you know the, the legitimate traffic then hits the EC2 web yeah. cluster. So we have a lot of web traffic that will bypass that on an, initi on an initial pass. Um, we then pre-process that data, um, and based on IP hitting various honey traps that we've set up, we then feed more people back to WAF for okay. another round of blocking. Yeah, um, and we tier that scale based on what their frequency is, we could block them for minutes, hours, days, or permanently, effectively. Okay, so you're picking up various signals, rules, looking at the web traffic in EC2, uh, or in your web servers, and then any suspicious actors, you're gonna pass back to WAF and say, yeah, block this IP. Exactly. Great, okay, good. Okay, so the, the legitimate traffic then, it's cleared the EC2 web cluster, yep. where does it go next? So we then send all data into RDS, mm. um, user data, mobile mining data, um, and then that gets stored for processing back out into data pipeline. Um, and then that gets periodically pushed into Athena for post analysis, basically. So we can see, again, it's, an, it's another level of blocking people. Okay, so we've got this word gamify here. I guess we're talking then about the approach you guys are using with Athena. Can you talk a bit about what you're doing there and how it works? Yeah, so rather than the standard um, run your SQL query and then block it, we decided to just make up games to say, you know, based on these rules, you're, you accrue 10 points. Based mm. on these rules, you accrue 100 points. If you reach, you know, 1,000 points, that means you're illegitimate traffic. Right. And then we feed that back through to the WAF uh, manually at the moment, and then again, it, it gets blocked from the front end completely. Okay, so we've got one, two, and then a third layer of security to filter out unwanted uh, users. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Great, um, this is interesting. I mean, also, we, we've got this lower uh, tier, if you like, this, this element of the diagram here. Do you want to talk a bit about what you guys are doing with API Gateway Lambda? Yeah, so more, more recently, we've in, introduced our instant payments um, to speed up our blockchain. Um, but obviously, because of that, we able to send all traffic via API Gateway. Just it's faster for us to develop, to deploy. Mm. Um, we're putting in some JSON rules to, to do similar to WAF, but essentially just blocking based on certain criteria. Um, that then gets post-processed via Lambda, um, and the data queries RDS just just for an initial hit uh, before sending whether the payment has been successful or failed into DynamoDB before it pops back along essentially to say okay. you can now take your goods because we've done it. Yeah, so in that scenario we've got say a customer using the mobile device, the mobile device is going to request to make a payment maybe yep. to, a, um, to a vendor, it's going to go through API Gateway Lambda and that's going to get a yes. Yeah, it's literally all, all done on their phone, they can yep. show a QR code, mm. QR code gets scanned, they hit this stack and then you can either walk away with your goods or not as the case may be. Okay, so by, by providing that instant payment system you've helped users to overcome one of the, I guess, one of the drawbacks of cryptocurrency, which is that, um, is that lag between making a payment and it being approved? Is that yeah, right? so no normally it will take 20 minutes for all the blocks to get confirmed. Now, there's one element of your uh, mobile application that intrigues me as well. I think the, the users do 
um, a cryptocurrency mining on the application, is that correct? Yes, so rather than mine on a traditional GPU, CPU, we allow them to mine, simulated mining, um, and they hit our API endpoints, and we distribute coins to them, say, yeah, this is, is for you because you've been hitting our API every day. Mm. So that's a form of customer loyalty reward scheme, I guess. Exactly, yeah. um, if you, you can sign up and not use it, um, but if you do, you, you get a reward effectively, and that's for the um, unbanked effectively. Yeah, and I guess going back to the beginning of our conversation, it partly explains why you've got potentially a lot of malicious actors trying to hit your system. Exactly, if, they, yeah. if, if you set up 100 actors, you get 100 times, right. thousands. It, it, it's economies of scale. Sure, great. Thanks, Barry, for sharing your solution today. No problem. Great. And thanks for watching This Is My Architecture.